District of Conservation is sponsored by CFACT. To learn more about the organization, visit www.cfact.org. Hey everyone, welcome to a special Thursday episode. I am sorry I didn't deliver on part three of our Keeper of the Everglades series yesterday, but I have some time today to publish a teaser of my forthcoming Conservation Nation video, the extended interviews, I should say. I will post some teasers today with three men that we spoke to. What you'll see highlighted in this upcoming video, we still have to edit it. I still have to narrate it or re-narrate it, actually. But you're going to hear from Marshall Jones of Max Fish Camp in the Everglades. He was the one who gave us that super informative tour, the airboat tour I went on. Also, we're going to interview and feature two men very involved in the company called Aquaculture, the founder, Nick Sabo, and also Mike Helfenbein, who is one of the primary drivers of all the different organizations and groups coming together for Everglades tours. So you'll hear from all three gentlemen very briefly here. And once we release the video, I will post the full extended conversation with them because I don't want to give away too much until we have that final video. But here's a little teaser. I hope you enjoy and stay tuned for the video. Mac, you took us out to the Everglades. You put us on the board for some bass. Talk a little bit about your operation, what you do, services you offer, and why you like doing what you do and, and being a gladesman in a nutshell. Well, I was born to be a gladesman. Uh, my family's lived in this house, on this land for five generations. This is the only life I've ever, I've ever known. Um, it is my honor uh, to to serve the Everglades with integrity and showcase one of God's natural wonders to the general public. And you never know who you're going to meet and you never know what influence they may have in this world. So it's imperative that throughout my life, I'm able to have that impact on indiv individuals where they can go back to wherever they came from and, and share that impression of the Everglades with whoever they, you know, their cohort. Hey Mike, why don't you introduce yourself and talk about why you're involved in promoting aquaculture? Absolutely. Thanks, Gabby. Uh, my name is Mike Elfenbein. I am a resident of Florida. I was born and raised in Miami. I live on the West Coast now, and uh, I hunt and fish and um, appreciate what it takes to be able to continue to do that for the rest of my life and for my children and my children after that. And I've always been... Uh, very much engaged in conservation efforts across the state and um, uh, this opportunity just kind of hit me in the side of the head. Um, I got a phone call one day from a congressman's office in Gainesville, uh, Congressman Yoho. I spoke with Jessica Norfleet there and she explained to me that there was a doctor at the University of Florida named Dan Canfield that was working on a project uh, for the St. John's River. They have similar issues in the St. John's like we have down here in South Florida and Lake Okeechobee. Um, and they explained that um, there was an opportunity to use the technology that they were going to apply to the St. John's to Lake Okeechobee to uh, resolve the same issues that we have with nutrient loads and blue-green algae blooms and uh, water quality issues. Let's talk about why you developed aquaculture and what went into the process. Sure. Sure. Um, well, I started quite a few years ago. Uh, my background is agriculture. Um, always been a, a farm boy. And um, years ago, we started managing phosphorus from large farms. And we would take the massive amounts of phosphorus and apply it to grassland, farmland at agronomic rates. And what would happen is you'd see the grass and the land respond in a very positive way. And so um, years ago, back in the late 70s, NASA took uh, water hyacinths and they cleaned up their sewage lagoon in one week with water hyacinths. And I remember this from when I was a kid because I recognized the equipment that they used to chop it up. So that got me excited, right? Um, so for years now, we've been growing water hyacinths in different types of waste, whether it be pig manure, human waste, cow manure, chicken manure. We've, we've done all the manures. <laughs> and um, water hyacinths really responds to the point where you'll take dirty water and make it look like clean drinking water. Like you could put your hand when it's, when it's fresh and you won't see your fingers a couple inches deep. But 
after the plants do what they're meant to do, they suck everything out of the water, you're just left with clean water. That's the byproduct of their action. And so we're always looking for compost and different uh, natural products to put on land. And when, we, when I first came down to Florida, I didn't realize that there was such a, an issue with uh, aquatic invasive species, water hyacinths, uh, uh, hydrilla, and it just it grows and grows and grows. And of course, because we've got 21 million plus people, I think, in the state now. And so you've got all this human activity, whether it be construction, whether it be sewage treatment releases, whatever the case may be, septic systems, it's all, all of the above, right? Rainwater. Um, these plants are flourishing. And so we came down with the idea, well, well, why don't we take those plants, harvest them, and put them back on the land? As always, I thank you so much for checking out the podcast. I hope you got to listen to parts one and two of the Keeper of the Everglades series we've had here. And I hope you are connected with us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Make sure you're subscribed to the podcast on your preferred platform, especially on Apple Podcasts. And you can head over there and leave us some five-star reviews if you feel inclined. Some episodes I want to tease for next week. We will be revisited by Travis Thompson, also kind of in this network of Florida Everglades conservationists. And we're going to have an update about the pointy pint phosphate runoff issue and problems in the Tampa Bay region. He's going to deconstruct what is happening there, kind of keep us updated and, and share what is going on. And we'll talk about some other stuff in conservation as well. On Tuesday, we will have an interview with Cable Smith of Lone Star Outdoors. We promised to cross-pollinate. I went on his podcast. Now he's going to come on mine, and we're going to talk about probably all the latest in gun control that came out of President Biden's press conference today. And on Wednesday, we have a special guest joining the podcast. We have a U.S. senator, I won't say who, that I haven't spoken to before, who will be coming on the podcast. They are very excited. They are very passionate about wildlife conservation, and it's going to be great to have them on. And I'm going to keep building the suspense until that time comes. But you have a lot to look forward to here on the podcast next week. I hope everyone has a great rest of the week. Hope you're going fishing and hunting and spending time outdoors, introducing someone new to the great outdoors. And staying with us here at District of Conservation. If you like what you're hearing, like I said, just share the good word, tell your friends to check us out, and have them lend their ear to what we say here on the podcast.